In problem number 31 of section 2.3, we're given two velocity functions modeling uh, well, velocities of two different particles. And we assume that they differ by a constant. So say v1 of t equal, is equal to v2 of t plus some constant c. And we're asked to kind of look at the um, relationship between the average velocities and the relationship between the average accelerations. Well, let's start out by looking at, um, at the average velocities. Uh, I'm going to denote the average velocity uh, by v bar. So v1 bar of t is uh, equal to, uh, let's just sit, look at some uh, interval from a to b, and we'll assume a uh, closed interval, uh, a to b. And we'll assume that the uh, velocity, both velocity functions are defined on this interval and continuous. Uh, so average velocity of v1 is 1 over b minus a times the integral from a to b of v1 of t dt. And uh, See, now we know that this is uh, going to be equal to uh, 1 over b minus a times uh, the integral from a to b of v2 of t plus the constant c. And the reason for that is uh, all I did is just take the, um, the integ integral from a to b of both sides of the equation, and then multiplied by 1 over b minus a. So this becomes uh, 1 over b minus a times, if we apply linearity, uh, we get the average velocity of the second particle, plus the integral from a to b of c, uh, which is uh, I'll put in some parentheses, parentheses here because we'll want to multiply by 1 over b minus a times the whole thing. Uh, so we'll end up with c times uh, now the upper endpoint minus the lower endpoint. And we see that this is equal to 1 over, um, so we know this uh, shouldn't have 1 over b minus a here because the entire um, entire thing, 1 over b minus a times the integral uh, from a to b of v2 is equal to the average velocity of the second particle. And so we'll just be multiplying it in the second term, 1 over b minus a times c times b minus a. And now the b minus a is cancel, and this is equal to v2 bar t plus c. And if we trace back all the way to the beginning, remember that this is equal to the average velocity of the first particle. So we see that the, two velo or the average velocities of the two particles differ by a constant. So. So just by any constant, by uh, the constant c. And so the next question is how, is it, how are the average velocity, or excuse me, accelerations related? Well, the first step is to find the acceleration functions. So say a1 of t is equal to the first derivative of the velocity function of the first particle. And similarly for a2 of t. Uh, and we know that um, v1, if we just take the derivative of both sides, uh, here we see that uh, v1 uh, prime of t 
is equal to v2 prime of t. Uh, so, uh, and of course, this just comes from the assumption that the velocities differ by constant. So, the derivative, uh, first derivative of the velocities must equal. But first derivative of velocities are just the acceleration functions. So since the acceleration functions of the two particles are identical, uh, their average accelerations are going to be the same. I mean, we're, if we, even if we go through and apply the definition, we'll just be um, applying the same integral to both, both sides of the equality and then dividing by the same thing. And we'll see that, well, the average accelerations are actually equal. 